In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today we hear Paul talking about the importance of foundation. Of our foundation in Christ. He says, we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's field. God's building, he says. And like a wise master builder, Paul continues, he said, I laid a foundation. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our foundation. Jesus Christ is the one that everything is founded on. Also including our personal existence. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And each moment God causes us to exist. Each moment God is making this reality itself. Heaven and earth. Time and space. To continue each second, each minute, each eon upon eon and age upon age that the earth exists here. It is being caused to exist, sustained in its existence by Jesus Christ. And not only is, the, is he the foundation of reality, but he is also involved, responsible for each breath that enters your lungs. If you have a breath in your lungs right now, it is coming to you from Jesus Christ himself. That's pretty amazing. So Jesus Christ is our foundation. Paul isn't merely exaggerating. He isn't just waxing poetic. He's not, he's not just being carried away in a rapture of devotion. He's stating a fact, a metaphysical fact, something about the basic nature of our reality and not only of reality in general, but of our personal existence as Christians. Christians are called out of the world and have the Holy Spirit placed into them such that we become God's building. We become God's temple. A temple is a place where, uh, where a God rests. We are God's temple. We are the one God's temple. So God comes to rest in you. And so as Christians, our foundation is even more so in Christ. At each step of the way. For he is the author, the initiator, the beginning of our faith and salvation. But also the end of it, the completion of it, and the completer of it. And so there is no other foundation in Christ. But that will cause us to actually look, to, to, to scrutinize ourselves even. To test ourselves. To searchingly look into our heart and ask ourselves... I see that Christ is my foundation, at least intellectually. At least mentally, I understand that Christ is my foundation. But what is my day-to-day -day foundation? What is my moment-to-moment -moment foundation? And one of the ways that we discover what our foundation is, is we do a little empirical test. We become scientists. And the next time, or in reflecting in our memory, when things start going difficult, when things start getting tough, what do we look to? What do you look to when times start getting difficult and tough? There are many options. Many of us look to luck. Things start getting tough. Well... I hope it works out. I'm hoping on some luck here. 
We could also rely on our intelligence. I'll figure this out. Things are tough. I'll figure it out. Our willpower. I'll just, I'll just will myself into the, out of this difficult situation. Out of loss of a spouse. We can't figure our way out of that. Loss of a job. Maybe we lose our home. When times start getting tough, that's when the question arises. When we lose our health. We can't just pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps when the doctor gives us the diagnosis. So in that moment, what is it that we're relying on? That's our foundation. And that foundation is either a true and sound foundation, or it is a foundation that Christ calls sand. We recall from Matthew's Gospel, where Christ is giving the Sermon on the Mount, and He's concluding all of the things that He has taught them. And He says that, that if you found yourself, if you, if you make these sayings of mine the rock of your life, you will, be, you will be founding yourself on a rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man, Christ said, who built his house on the rock. We know that Christ himself is the rock. And the rain fell... And the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock, on Christ. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house. Who here has not suffered? Who here has not been in distress? When the winds slammed against you. And Christ says, on the other hand, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell. And great was its fall, because it was founded on sand. Notice that, it, that, that to a, a Christian, they still get the wind slamming against them. We don't become Christians for a more comfortable life. Notice the rain still fell on the Christian. Notice all of the difficulties that fall upon those within and those on the outside. It's the same suffering. It's the same difficulty. But the difference is, is foundation. What is our foundation? Because if our foundation is in ourself or in the strength of man's hand which includes technology, if our faith is, is in medicine first and God second, then unfortunately the bad news is that that is idolatry. Idolatry, a working definition of idolatry is fearing, loving, or trusting anything or anyone more than God. If we trust in ourself or the strength of man's hand or his medicine or our family or our friends more than God, then we have actually violated one of the, the root of the Ten Commandments to place something before God. God says, thou shalt have no other God before me. And we can make gods out of anything. People were at that time making gods out of stone. Out of rocks. Pebbles. People will make a god out of anything. And often we make a god out of man. Out of ourselves. According to God's definition. 
Because anything that we place before Him, that we fear, love, or trust more than Him, is considered idolatry. Does this mean that we don't rely on technology or medicine in any shape or form? No, the question is about foundation. What is your foundation? Because Paul had said also in 1 Corinthians, he said, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The crucified Lord of glory is our foundation. And when you place your faith in Him, nothing can separate you from Him. Nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. As Paul says in Romans, Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, is interceding for you right now. Maybe you have placed your trust in something other than Him, but He is interceding and pleading your case before the Father right now. Who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. So Paul asks, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation? Will distress? Will persecution? Will famine, starvation, thirst, nakedness, or peril, or sword, or even death separate you from Christ? The winds blew, and the rains fell, and the storm raged and slammed and beat against that house, but it did not fall. That's not a reference to your strength. It's a reference to the strength of the rock. It's a reference to the strength of Christ. When you place your faith and your trust and you lean on Him, on that wall, on that rock, nothing can separate you. And then you take your peace into the trial. You take your peace into the tribulation. You take your peace into the suffering. We overwhelmingly, Paul says, we overwhelmingly conquer through Him, through Christ who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, not even anything that we might fear to come to us in the future, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus for you. Christ Jesus did this for you, so that you can place your trust in Him where He sits right now interceding for us before the Father. Glory to Jesus Christ.